excuse me, Bob, you call yourselves Voices of Black Mothers United. We are. Why? Okay, Have so... Have you explained your situation? Okay. Why we got started? Yeah. What happened, um, I was a community affiliate of the Woodson Center since 2006. And um, in 2004, uh, my daughter was killed. She was at a gas station. The bullet went through her body, stopped in the heart of her girlfriend. Both girls died. I dropped off the scene for some years. And when I came back to the communication hub of the Woodson Center, Mr. Woodson was, where you've been, you know, and I shared and and I also shared the frustration that no one wants to hear about a black child dying in the community. And we, Mr. Woodson said, well, you know what? I find that to be a problem. You know, everyone wants to jump up and down and hear about uh, Black Lives Matter and the, and the platform of, of defund the police because it's something negative. People want to hang on to something negative, but we're going to give them something positive to hang on to because there was not an alternative to that. So Mr. Wilson gave Black mothers a voice nationally to be heard. We provided a platform, Grand Lad, as we always do. That I, everybody talks about people in these communities, no one talks to them to ask them what's important to them. Black Lives Matter and others say, uh, uh, we need to defund the police. Well, 80% of black Americans living in these communities are against defund the police. They want more police. Um, black Lives Matter and others say that, that, um, that, that racism is the biggest problem facing black Americans. 60% of blacks uh, poll said that it's not the case. But And so some of these mothers, when they spoke out and said that we need to address the enemy within, <clears throat> we are killing our children, not white police. That's well, actually, some Black Lives Matter people attacked these mothers mm -hmm. and said, you're off message. And so I said, wait a minute. They need to be speaking for themselves. And so I told Sylvia, why don't we reach out? So far, I mean, it, it spread like like thousands. So now we have how many chapters and how many? 22 months? states and thousands of mothers. And a lot of these mothers have their own organizations where they've actually took the step to turn their pain into purpose. They just needed direction of what to do on the ground and how to help on the ground. And that's what we've been doing. There's one study, I'm sorry, Glenn, that shows that 35% of these moms end up dying five years after they lose a child. And so what Sylvia does is counsel many of these women in the early stages of losing a child. And I, just last week or so, she talked a mom out of suicide, had her on the phone, um, and, and had her husband, you know, call the police. Uh, and so she, she and other moms are reaching out to, to provide that kind of comfort. But they're also engaged in, as she said, other activities to prevent crime. We will actually have moms embedded with homicide uh, units so that they, they respond and go to a site of a homicide because that's where a lot of drama occurs, where a lot of, uh, of, uh, of anger gets expressed towards the police. So in some cases, they even change the way they process a murder scene so that they don't leave a, a child laying there for hours while they investigate. But this was all because of the, of the input from the moms uh, who work with Rodney Monroe, who's a former chief of police who's working now in a very creative way. So we really are uh, working with these moms because they have some exciting, innovative ways to heal the, the hearts of these moms, but also healing the community and working towards preventing violence. Sylvia, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Crystal Joy, that was your baby's name. Crystal Joy. It was crystal clear that she was going to be a joy to the world. So what we have here in the face of the awful tragedy of losing a child to violence, to gun violence or other, 
is a constructive response from the victims, the surviving victims, to take matters to the extent that they can into their own hands and to try to move forward positively. You're working with police in some of these uh, cities. It's an absolute must. The police is um, very much a part of the equation in order to reduce the violence. Um, There's, like Mr. Woodson was saying, 80% of the community members want more police. They want sensible policing in their communities. Um, Defund the police is not an option. When you work with the police and you talk about what's happening and what's going on within your community, what you need out of a peace officer that they've sworn to be, and they have that understanding as well as the community member have an understanding that, okay, we're going to be here. We're going to be visible. So don't get upset when your son is stopped. You know, these are the things that we have to do to reduce this violence. Now, one of the the, the bigger issues, um, and, I, and I'll tell you a story. Last year, we had a forum with the police and, and survivors and community members. Well, the police expressed their frustration as to the the community won't talk. Right. You may know who is doing what, but you won't say anything. Yeah. So they gave a very good definition of what snitching really is, whereas the community members and the people that were there really had no idea that snitching is when a defender or or someone that's already in prison tell on someone else to get their sentence reduced. But when a community member calls the police and tell of someone doing something that's violent in their community or committing a crime in their community, that's called a community or a community member complaint. That's what that is. It's not snitching. They also go in were able to work in five cities where moms were actually employed to deploy at a homicide site. As a consequence, it it instilled trust between the police. And as a consequence, the number of closed cases increased in cities where we had the moms. So they are really uh, uh, establishing trust between the community and, and as a consequence, more people are willing to disclose who the perpetrator was. And so that we are we're going to be expanding that and exactly. doing some evaluation of that. But we hope to be investing in more chapters. So the more moms can get involved uh, beyond just uh, 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 um, um, grieving. But part of dealing with that grief is to take action to prevent other moms from having to go through that. And that's a very an important part what of ha- the healing. What happens is that every time I see a mom on the TV and she's just received the news that her child is dead and she's wailing and that pain resonates within me. I can imagine that it does. So we have got to reduce this because it's just killing uh, families. Is killing families because you just don't kill that one person. It destroys and breaks down that whole family. Okay.